the way he's treated me. The most beastly thing I ever heard of, and I won't stand for it. The judge told him to pay, and I won't take a cent less. After all, he's off the... A half a loaf. Well, he can keep it, and the cheese that goes with it. I'm used to luxury. He can blame himself for that. The half he's offered you is still a tidy monthly sum. I won't stand for it, do you hear? I won't stand for it. I'll send him to jail first. Sending him to jail, Sandra, is not going to help matters. He still has money, you know. And in the alimony jail, he could buy all the bodily comforts he needs. That may be, Eddie. But he'll be in jail just the same. And that'll cramp his style. All right. Remember, it's your idea, not mine. Sheriff's office. Well, this looks like my last day of freedom, Dorothy. There you are. It's a terrible law, Mr. Hamilton. It was made for women. You shouldn't complain. Now, about that private little plan of ours. Is it ready to launch? Yes, sir. You're to sell at present market prices, then I'm to secretly buy when the stock hits a new low. Exactly. Follow it out to the letter, Dorothy, while I'm sitting tight in the alimony jail. I'm sure the former Mrs. Hamilton will listen to reason when your favorite stock hits bottom. That's the purpose. Rang, sir. Rang? The, uh, the pantry indicator registered a tinkle, sir. No, I didn't ring. <laughs> Must have been a mouse nibbling on the wire. I'll set a trap for it. The drugs. You might bring me a highball. Make it strong. Maybe my last. Highball, strong and lasting. Yes, sir. The stock will rise, of course. Yes, of course it will. I have entire control of the company, you know. The success of my scheme depends upon you. You can rely on me. It hasn't taken me four years to find that out. You know, you're not like a woman at all, Dorothy. I mean, you're, well, you're dependable, reliable, like a man. No feminine nonsense. You understand business very well, Mr. Hamilton. You bet I do. When the proper time comes, jumbo mines will reach 80, perhaps 90. <coughs> With you, Grog. <laughs> I, uh, I'm afraid I have the oxydopsies today, sir. Nervous about my trouble, huh? There you are, sir. Mr. Hamilton, might, uh, might I ask you a favor? What's on your mind, Grog? Well, uh, since you are, uh, uh, since you might leave rather unexpectedly, may I have uh, my check today instead of the end of the week? Uh, it might save me. Yes, I certainly, Gloves. Take care of that, Dorothy. Yes, sir. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Hamilton. Thank you, Miss. Well, what's the hurry about your check? Alimony, sir. You? <laughs> Following in your master's footsteps, sir, Gloves. <laughs> well, I, I tried not to mention it, sir. Well, you've kept out of jail at any rate. Only by the skin of my molars, if I might say so. <laughs> Gloves. What is your frank opinion of alimony? It's like paying for a dead horse, sir. Jumbo platinum, jumbo platinum mine, jumbo platinum, jumbo platinum eighty, eighty eight, ninety, jumbo platinum, Hudson two, 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 three.
They just elected Chester Hamilton Preston. They only changed their anthem to the battle cry of freedom. That's what the wives are singing. Here, try to imagine this is good. Say, Dupin, anything on the book against me taking a peek at the new specimen? No, step right in. <laughs> Thank you. 
mining stuff for you, Jumbo. Which my super judgment tells me will rise to 80 or 90 points before sundown. What good does that do me? It gives you a full cash settlement of $2,500. My little bowl of chili. Well, if it's all the same to you, I'll take this month's alimony in advance. Oh, you can't do that. Because I have invested that to buy this. Well, it better be good. Aha! Fear not, my little drama, Derek. What's that? I think it's the wind. I'll close the window. No, 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 no. no. I'll, I'll close the window. No, no. I'll close the window. 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 I'll close
shop, sir. The splashing of the surf. Mm. The smell of the fish. Mm. Beautiful. Beautiful. But I, I haven't the proper clothes for that sort of thing, sir. Take a suit or two of mine, and good luck. Oh, thank you. I, uh, thank you, sir. All right, God. <laughs> thank you 2,500 times, sir. Here's to the ultimate, the long way she went till the day her dawn and dawn. What are you stalling for? Get down there and get to work. <laughs> I've resigned. I'm all through, Dookie, old boy. I'm all through. Yeah? Well, you haven't even started yet. <laughs> Mr. Hamilton has advanced me $2,500 to pay Laura off. $2,500 smack it? Uh-huh. What a vacation Laura and I will have. You're going on a vacation with my money? Sure. Me and your wife, just like this. Which one is my wife? Yes, darling. He's been here and gone. That's great. Did he give you that 2,500 berries his boss just gave him? 2,500? No, all he gave me was one month's alimony. What? One month's alimony? Why, that double crossing? What? What's the matter, dear? you have here, huh? Yes. Uh, plenty of sand, uh, lots of water, eh, what? Oh, yes, indeed. I thought he was from London. I wonder if he could be the Sir Oswald Rock, the big game hunter. Lovely bit of femininity in the lobby. Who was the lady that uh, scored the touchdown? 
pretty dark. Is it really true, Sir Oswald, that the animals in Africa grow to be so gigantic? Well, uh, uh, yes and no. No? My uncle says that you... Well, in that case, yes. Uh, have any of you ever been to Africa? You've never been to Africa. You look at me. You're so hot. You left it. Then I can speak with freedom. I've been told that the African safari is the most picturesque thing in the country. Uh, the safari. Oh, yes. Particularly the female safari. <laughs> oh, my. You should see them during the mating season. How they skip around from crag to crag like a hardy shamrock. You know? Beautiful. Beautiful. <laughs> but I'm in the safari, the African safari, the native caravan. Oh, the gap. Oh, the safari, the caravan. I thought you meant the safari, the safari. The safari is the African chipmunk, you know, so-called, because it's so far from the nose to the uh, chipmunk. My uncle tells me that in Africa, the insects are far more to be feared than the greater animals. Your uncle is absolutely right. Oh, I'm so sorry. Thank you, Sir Oswald. Don't be interrupted. No, no, no. I'm, I, I'm glad you came, as a matter of fact. I, you sit down. Thank you. There you are. Sir Oswald has been telling us about the insect life in Africa. Do go on, Sir Oswald. I'm vitally interested in bugs. <laughs> Never will I forget the day I was attacked by a herd of beetles. A herd of beetles? Oh, yes, yes. The African beetles sometimes grow to be as large as turkeys. <laughs> well, there I was standing on the plains all alone, when suddenly I heard the bellless cry of the beetle. <laughs> the beetle cried the battle. There they were, 50 of them, galloping in my direction, their tails lashing furiously. Tails? Yes, yes, uh, the, the last one, uh, the, the tail one. <coughs> With red fiendish whiskers on, they came. I raised my spotter, my rifle, but not before I saw the whites of their eyes. And I fired, and 40 out of the 50 bit the dust. But there were 20 of them left, and what was I to do? I had no more bullets. The 10 bottles were up, the beetles were on me in an instant. It came to be a hand-to-hand -hand encounter. It was every beetle for itself. My bowie knife slashed the air to ribbons. wounded upon the ground, and I sneaked up to him. But he looked up at me with his cow-like eyes, and I didn't have the heart to kill him. What did you do? I took him home and nursed him back to health. Until one day he died, and I had him stuffed. Where is he now? My man is using him for a back scratch. Thank you, Dorothy. Swell girl, Dorothy. Of course, 
she is. What about it? Oh, I just didn't think you'd noticed. Well, it looks like your stock failure gag worked. Certainly did. Sandra's on half rations. <laughs> Say, listen, I was going to be best man. Now that you're free, when do you put on the chains again? Tomorrow. Tomorrow? As soon as that? Tomorrow, right here in this room. Everything quiet and simple. Oh, no, I hate quiet weddings. Why not have some paper caps and confetti? The bride wouldn't like that. What do you think of my judgment? Beautiful, isn't she? So sweet, innocent, untouched by life, like, like something out of a fairy story. You sure she's not something out of a snappy story? Hey, wait a minute. That's all right. I was only kidding. She looks like a cream puff wrapped in cellophane. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that little pet. I'd like to wipe that smile off her face. What are you so excited about? What difference does it make? I didn't take that dog. I let him cut my alimony so that he could give her the difference. A society dame with a baby stare. Let's have a look. <laughs> She's funny as that. That baby stare looks very familiar to me. You know that dame? Know her. Why, she used to buck the extra in the movie studio. Her name's Fanny Malone. Keep going, baby. I'm listening. Of course, darling. Yes, it should be quiet. Oh, I hate ostentation. Then what a way if we can be alone and no one can find us. That's my idea exactly. Oh, well, by the way, did you get the flowers I sent you? Yes, dear, and I love them. Roses especially. Oh, do you think so? Well, there's only be a few hours. Goodbye. Yes, ma'am. Tell your mistress the Fuller Brush woman is here. I don't think we need any. A woman from your man's cab. Well, who are you? Sandra. I tell fortunes and everything. Well, of all the nerve coming up here unannounced. No? Yeah, I got that too. I had the man you're going to marry. Oh, I see. You're the ex. Right. First time. Send your shadow here for a spot of gin. You're going to need it. I never drink. You think of it? Yes. Cigarette? I never smoke. Before I get through with you, baby, you're going to burn. You kindly state your business and go. Okay. Hamilton faked a Wall Street crash and cut my alimony in half. See? No, I don't see. But he cut my alimony in half just the same. And now that he's in the money, it's up to you to get him to put it back where it was. Well, how dare you suggest such a thing? How dare you even think of things that I should become a party to the sordid scheme? Sit down, Fanny Malone. Yeah, the minute you came through that door, I said to myself, I said, Do it? There's a girl who moves. I said to myself, I said, Will it? Why don't you go by your right name, Fanny? I don't like the name of Fanny better. You may be a great, big, lovely Phyllis in your boyfriend, but you're just plain, old-fashioned Fanny Malone to me. That's what my first husband used to say. Where did you get your final decree from that bird? Oh, about three months. You know, now that you brought the subject up, Right on. 
Thanks a lot, Dorothy. Certainly have added a feminine touch to the decorations. I, I hope Miss Van Sant likes it. Of course she will. She'll like you, too. I'm sure you'll both be very happy. You bet we will. Wait till you see her, Dorothy. Then you'll understand how I've at last found the one woman for me. I'm glad you feel that way. Any girl could be happy with you. taking a shower, miss. This ring I give thee in token and pledge of our constant faith and abiding love. By the authority vested me by the sovereign state, I now pronounce you man and wife. Thank you. 
me, dear. Excuse me, boys. Certainly. Yes, we're sailing tonight, and we're going to be gone for months. A girl only has a honeymoon once in her life. Well, maybe twice. <laughs> <laughs> yes, but she wants it to last a long time. You got that, boy? Yes, I have. There you are, miss. You can see for yourself. Hand over those snapshots, Boggs. Oh, Mr. Hamilton, sir. I, uh, if I had only known, I wouldn't have done it. Wait a minute. There they are. When were these taken? Last week. Well, what about it? Oh, your faith in women is pathetic. Am I supposed to have hysterics because Phyllis was photographed with this idiot on the beach? <clears throat> uh, we weren't on the beach all the time. What was that? I gave her all I had, sir, and she... What do you mean? What do you mean you gave her all you had? A diamond ring, $1,500. Her hotel bill, $700. Why, you... Why, you... Go ahead, sir. I wouldn't even feel it. Wait a minute. Rogers, have you got any proof of all this? Yes, sir, I have. Here you are. Here, here. Those are the... There's, those are the... Re 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 Exhibit A. Exhibit B. Exhibit C. D. E. F. C. H. I. She tossed me aside like an old glove. Just a minute. Mr. Brooks, your paper. Thanks. Hello. Yeah, okay, sure. No, no, no. No, Philly on. I got a better one coming up. Wait a minute. Come here. Get an earful of this private flash from the coast. Repeat that. Her name is plain Fanny Malone. And she's been tossed around like a beach ball all over Southern California. There must be some mistake. Yes, and you made it. What am I going to do? All right, will you listen to me for the first time in your life? I listen to anything. Now listen. Rogs, you're in on this, too. Oh, sir, I've been in so much. Now, get a load of this, the both of you. From now on, all you've got to do is follow water. Now, get this. This is my Paris address. Wherever I am, this will reach me. Yes, sir. Hurry up, darling. I'm afraid we're going to be late. Don't worry, dear. We have plenty of time. Mr. Hamilton home? You can't see him now. He's leaving for you. Yeah, that's why we came. Are you Chester Hamilton? I am. I'm under arrest. What? We're from the Department of Justice. But what does this mean? We're taking him to Washington. Stop swindling. Federal investigation. I don't know what they're talking about. But this is our honeymoon. I will have to wait. Yes, I don't know what this means. I'm innocent. Come on, Hamilton. Why, this is ridiculous. Yes, you can't take him away like this. I'm sorry, old man. We'll wait for you downstairs. Yes, sir. I guess I'll have to go, dear. It'll be all right. Don't worry. I'll go down to headquarters and I'll be back in an hour or two. It'll be all right. Goodbye, dear. No. See how well I'm controlling myself? What are you doing here? I came to borrow a book. I own this apartment. I uh, lease it furnished to Mr. Hamilton. I am Mrs. Hamilton. You. Oh. Oh. Now I know why you tossed me. 
me aside. Now I know why you ran away and left me on the sand like a piece of kelp. Have you a pistol here? Or a long, sharp knife? No. Don't be alarmed. I simply want to kill myself. No. Ah, this will do. Oh, I won't stop. I can't stand it. I know you don't believe me, but it's true. My father literally dragged me from your side to marry his choice. Please believe me, sir, Oswald. When I married Mr. Hamilton, I left my heart behind. You poor child. Look, Thank you. I'm beginning to understand now. Your life was mapped out for you by an irate parent. It's true. I'm a very unhappy man. I'm going back to Africa, where the wild things understand me. Goodbye. Must you go? It's the only decent thing to do. I still have your ring. Yes, yes, I thought you did. Well, keep it. Keep the little pebble as a token of what might have been. Well, if you insist. And perhaps, who can tell, I may call again for another <coughs> book. Who was it, Miss Miller? Him? I'm going to put him on ice and save him for a rainy day. go back to Africa. We could play in the jungle. We could start life all over again. What's that? The meeting my husband. Your husband? What shall I do? Well, you've got to hide. Hide? Yes. You're back to some place. He's got there. Trial, of course. 
You'll wait for me, darling, I know. A little flat on Third Avenue, I suppose. <sighs> What's that? Oh, it's just dead now. When you're ready, I have a drink for you. Well, here I am. Dorothy, what, what are you doing here? Why didn't you tell me? Why, if I told you, you wouldn't have let me do it. I won't let you do it now. Go in and get dressed this minute. I won't. This is one time when I don't take your dictation, Mr. Hamilton. Wait till I get my hands on Brooks for this. I'm here, and here I stay. Have you gone out of your mind? Yes, that's just what I've done. I've watched you do silly, stupid things for years, and I've never said a word. I've kept my head and I've been miserable. Oh, I think this is a terrible thing. But now I don't care. If someone has to be found here with you, it's going to be me. I'll never see you off tonight anyway. You don't mean that. You don't... Go and then get your clothes on and get out of here before it's too late. You will, you've got to. Is that your husband, Mrs. Hamilton? That's him. Well, good night. Happy days. There's something about this that worries me. What is it? I just found it out. I don't know what to do about it. You have fine old eyes, haven't you? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Do you mean to say this makes Reggie a lord? Yep. Monaco and all. This is amazing. I thought you'd be interested. I am. Sandra, you were built for a title. Thanks. Oh, uh, I just dropped in to show that to Reggie. Oh, well, uh, I'll do that. Yes, I thought you would. Well, but on second thought, hadn't you better hear those wedding bells first? I know my stuff, Brooke. <laughs> oh, say, speaking of wedding bells, I hear the more recent Mrs. Hamilton is about to ring out again. Nice, fast work.
I told him to invite all the hungry chorus girls and shout. I guess he did. Join together in marriage, you now confess it. Now will you join him? You take this woman to be your lawful wedded wife, to love, cherish, and protect her. Are you? Then place the ring on the bride's finger.
married myself. Hey, Reggie. Well, you're just in time for the finish, if you uh, get what I mean. Ring, ring. 